Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the ride Twin Pig, their volume shifted twin. This board features Ride's twin hybrid rocker, which is cam rocker with more rocker in the tip and the tail. This is gonna give you that load and pop and snap from the camber underfoot, but you're going to end up with a more buttery area where that rocker is in the tip and the tail, as well as more optimal powder float, if that's your thing, and ease of entry in and out of turns. This board is available in 136, 142, 148, 151, 154, 156 wide, and 157. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day with warmer temps. There was some hot pow off the runs. There was chunky, lumpy snow and spots on the runs. Frozen corduroy, perfect corduroy. Kind of just a mix of every mid-season condition. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. Well, since the last time I rode this board, it seems that they've actually softened it up torsionally as well as in the tips. The flex points are more noticeable. It's easier to engage. It still has that middle of the road freestyle flex to it. Now, with the width of this board comes the stability. Sure, you do get some chatter out in the tips at high speed, especially if you're pushing into really rutted out lumpy terrain, but by and large, it pretty much kills it off right underfoot, which gives this board a damp yet lively ride because, well, ride snowboards are known to being lively. Overall, it's a middle of the road freestyle flex. Well, not the snappiest board I've been on from Ride. It has more than enough to satiate you, especially if you're popping off rollers, side hits, or ollieing over slow signs or fat skier kids. Basically, that camber section loads up. It engages that rocker section. It creates that springboard effect, and you pop with it. You do have to load the camber, so if you know how to do that, that's good. If you don't, well, that sucks. You need to learn. Overall, it snaps how you'd want it. it's predictable it feels like a board that you've ridden when it comes to jumps whether you're hitting the kitty line or the big boy stuff it's got you covered it's gonna pop off the lip if you want it to or you can be laid back and let the lip throw you you're gonna get a little more stability in the landing just due to the width underfoot so that is always an added bonus the nice thing about this board is you got this cam rocker profile with more rocker in the tip and the tail and you've got a lot of width to play with so when you're buttering on the nose or the tail you really don't have to worry about it hooking up too much. You've just got this super stable section to play with. Now with that said, you've got to understand how to get your weight outside the camber zone to hit that flex point to get it to engage. And you basically have to throw a little muscle at it. It's got a lot of rebound, so it wants to put it back down. So it's gonna fight you when you're going sideways on the nose or the tail, it wants to slap it back down. And the same thing happens when you're jibbing. When you're locking into a press, it wants to put itself back down. So you need to understand how to sit out on the tail or the nose and really activate the flex in this board right where that rocker hits the camber. That's what the flex point is. And when you get sideways, that camber section through the middle cradles the feature. It doesn't clap out. I mean, there's some rigidity in there, but it really does cradle around it absolutely perfect. A little speed, a little muscle goes a long way with this board when you're buttering and jibbing. Since the last time I rode this board, it's changed immensely. You got a different flex pattern in there and you got the new slim wall in there, which just grips better on every type of terrain. So when you're hitting ice, it doesn't kick out as easily as the old twin pig did. It stays more locked in. You can just really push into it. And with it having more torsional flex, that really lets you ankle steer more, which changes the dynamic of the carp. Now, you can lay this board over on edge, but you're gonna hit limitations, especially when you're pushing off the tail. You're just gonna notice that it starts to kick out a little bit when you're really aggressive. If you're medium aggressive or being mellow, you won't notice it at all. This board with the asymmetrical side cut does leave a trench on the heel side edge as well as the toe side edge. You really don't have to worry about it. It's good for doing what I call park carbs, where you're going around a feature or some stupid person that's in your way that's thumb jacking their fart box that shouldn't be there. You don't really have to worry about it. Is it a board I'd go rail Euro carbs and hard turns with all day? No, but can you? Sure. Do you have to worry about booting out? Not really, because if you see how wide this thing is, it's insane. So that's kind of how it turns. It's actually better than the old one. 
Who's this board for? The volume shifted loving freestyle guy. So overall, I feel like this board now sits between the Zero and the Bench Warmer, which are two boards that I actually like more than this board. This is a better version compared to the last time I rode this board, but it's not mind blowing. It just sort of is like, oh, well, it's there. The slim wall does work. And I do wish that I'd ridden this in a 51 over a 54. I think the 51 would have been more fun for my style of riding, especially because I'm getting older. I don't really need a stiffer, aggressive park board anymore. I've really become a really crappy park rider. But overall, I see where this sits. I just think that I'm probably gonna push the bench warmer or the zero more. But if you're looking for a volume shifted asymmetrical twin, this isn't a bad option. It's just not anything mind blowing in my mind. Comparable boards, the GNU Rider's Choice C3, the Marhar Lumberjack X, the Nitro Optisim. Binding recommendations, the Ride C8, the Burton Malavita, the Rome Katana. This has been my review of the Ride Twin Pig. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.